Hello and welcome back. In today's lecture I'm going to show you how to put our first overlay layer on the map. But before we get to vector overlays, I'm going to show you how to put an image overlay on the map. And this is a really powerful technique. For instance, you might have some special analysis that you performed in a desktop GIS. Maybe it's an opportunity cost surface or something like that that you spend a lot of time analyzing for and you want to display it on the web. You can export that raster as an image like a PNG or a JPEG image and then display it in Leaflet. And it's really easy to do. Or you might have some aerial photography or LiDAR imagery or, or maybe you just want to play a trick on your friend and convince them that the alien mothership is hovered right over top of his house. Pretty much anything you want to do with putting some kind of image or raster data onto a map and having a georeference in space you can do with this technique. So the first thing we're going to do is look at the documentation in Leaflet. And this isn't a plugin, this is part of the core Leaflet documentation. So it's under Docs, and then under Raster Layers, we have Image Overlay. And if you see, the constructor method takes three parameters. The first one is a string as a URL to the image, so that tells us where to find the image. The second parameter is a lat long bounds object, and that defines two opposite corners of the image in space, so Leaflet knows where to put it on the map. And the third parameter is a JavaScript object with options in it. And we've seen this before. The options that are available to us are opacity, and that's a pretty cool one because you can control the opacity of the image. So this is a good way to add hill shading or something like that. Or maybe you just want your data to show without covering up the underlying map. And there's a couple other options here as well that you can explore if you need to. The opacity I think is the important one. So that seems pretty straightforward. I don't have any image particularly that I want to show for this area. I don't have any raster data or anything like that. So I'm just going to go make my own. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this web map that we've created and I'm going to have an image that's just aerial photo of Chapultepec Park and then we'll load that into the map and we'll be able to turn it on and off as an overlay layer. So we'll be able to put the aerial photography over top of some other background map. And you can actually do some pretty cool effects with this method. So the first thing I'm going to do is I want to reduce the size of my web page just to the area that I want to see. And really this is just a safe space, it's the only reason I'm doing this. Next, I'm going to get the coordinates of these corners. So the coordinates mouse position show down here. If I go all the way to the left, when I get off the map, I see what the exact coordinate of that left hand side is. I'm going to write that down, negative 99.20843. Then I'll do the same with the top here. Looks like 19.42993. And then I'll do the same with this opposite corner. Now if you have some raster data that you've created in a GIS system, it probably has metadata that has the extents. And so you can get these latitude and longitude values from that. And that's actually probably more accurate. Because the next thing I'm going to do, is I'm going to use this Windows Snip tool. And I'm going to clip out this image. And this is the part where we might lose a little bit of accuracy, just because it's hard to get these crosshairs lined up exactly at the edge of the aerial photography. But we'll be close enough for our purposes. And now I'm going to save this in our web map 201. In our image directory, I'm just going to save this as chapeltepic.png. And you could save it as a JPEG, it would work, but PNGs are nice because they allow transparencies. And you'll see why that's important. Okay, so I have an image. It's saved in our image directory. I have the coordinates of the two corners. And we'll use that to create our lat long bounds object when we create the image overlay. Now one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use a program called GIMP. But you could use Photoshop or any other image processing program. GIMP is kind of cool though because it's open source. They'll do a lot of the same stuff that Photoshop does, but it's free. And that's keeping in the theme of this course, because I don't want you to have to pay for any software. There, yeah, now I've already loaded the image into GIMP. And I'm just going to do this really quickly. I don't expect you to follow along, because really it would take you longer to download and install GIMP than it would take just to do this exercise. But you can try it on your own. You can use any software that you want. Now I'm going to use the free select tool to come down here and select part of the image. I'm not going to be very careful about following the lines exactly. If you were doing this for real on a production website, you'd probably be a little bit more careful. I'm just showing you the concept. So I created my selection. I'm just going to delete that. And then I'll do the same thing up here.
and delete that. So now we have just the aerial photography of Chapultepec Park, and the rest of it's transparent. This checkered area is transparent. But the actual image is still the same size, so our coordinates are going to be the same. So then I'm going to go to File, Export, and I'm going to try to write over the original image. And I think that worked. Let's go to our htdocs folder. Webmap 201, image, and yeah, that worked. All right, so we have our image. Now let's open this in brackets, open index.html. I'm going to create a layer called layer chapel tepic. And then I'm going to create the layer. by calling the leaflet image overlay constructor method and I'm going to pass out the URL in this case it's just the img directory and what do we call it chapeltepic.png and next we have to give it a lot long bounds object and we can do that with array notation so the first I wrote it down it's 19.42993 and negative 99.20843 so that's one corner the other corner takes another lat long object and it's 19.40621 and negative 99.17453 all right and we'll add that to the map right away So that'll show if we looked at it right away, at least if I didn't make any spelling errors. But one thing we still want to do is we're going to add this to the overlays object as Chapeltepec image. And then the value of this property is the layer that we just created. Layer Chapeltepec. And that's it. We've already added this object overlays to the layer control when we created it. So now we'll see the main difference between an overlay layer and a base map. In the selection control, the base maps, you just pick one. And in the overlays, you can have as many visible as you want. You turn them on and off because they're checkboxes. All right, let's save this. We'll go back to our web page. I'm going to hit refresh. And there it is. Our image is right where it's supposed to be. Let's see, so it's kind of a neat effect, especially if you had the background map, something different like maybe watercolor or one of those toner layers from Damon that really makes this imagery pop out. And it's a pretty cool effect. And here you see in the layer selection control, it's a checkbox now, so I can turn that on and off as I want. That's also a pretty cool effect. And I'll do one more thing really quick here. Is I'm going to go back here when I create the layer. I'm going to set the opacity option to 50%. Save it. Hit refresh. Now we have the same image, but this time it's 50% transparent. So you can see some of the stuff that's underneath it. Some of the labels and roads and stuff like that, but you still see the image. Same thing with the watercolor map. This is kind of a cool effect if you really want to make the image pop. Okay, let's do something else real quick here. This lecture is getting a little bit long, but this is really cool, so I want to show you. Let's go back to the leaflet documentation and look at the image overlay documentation. Well, see we have a method called set opacity. And we can pass that method any number between 0 and 1 to change the opacity of the image. So we can write code or do this in response to, say, a DOM event. Say, clicking an HTML button. Or you could even do it with an easy button. But we can also get a little bit fancier and set this opacity value using an HTML slider. And so let's do that. First thing we're going to do is go to our editor. And we'll go up here and in the HTML, within this sidebar div, we're going to add a slider and some labels and stuff. So let's 
do all this within an h4 tag just to keep it consistent with what's above it we'll say image opacity and then we'll put a span class the span class is just so we can call this section of text within javascript and we can change it and we'll call this image opacity and since we're starting with an opacity of 0 0.5 we'll put that here and then underneath this image opacity line we're going to put a slider and we do that with an input type equals range that makes it a slider we'll give it an id of slide opacity and then we'll set some values minimum value equals zero maximum value equals one we'll set the step equal to say 0 0.1 and we'll set the initial value equal to 0 0.5 so let's see what that looks like on the web go to our web map refresh and that's in our sidebar so we'll open it up and there we have image opacity 0 0.5 and we have a slider here doesn't do anything at this point because we don't have anything connected to it but we'll do that right now let's go down all the way to the end of our javascript we're going to write an event handler for the change event of the slider so we'll call that slider using jQuery and I called it slide opacity and then the event handler is going to be on the change event and what's going to happen it's going to run this anonymous function which I'm writing right now and in that function the first thing we're going to do is that span which we called image opacity we're going to update the html there and it's going to be this value and again since it's inside a function that's responding to an event on sld opacity this refers to the html element with sld opacity which is a slider and so we're just returning the value of the slider whenever it changes and displaying it within that span tag and then the other thing we're going to do we're going to call the layer chapel tepic set opacity function and we're going to pass it also the value of the slider whenever it changes and so that's going to change the opacity when we change the slider let's see if it works I'm going to save i'll go to the map refresh open a sidebar and now if i move the slider you can see the opacity changes that's pretty cool huh and we can do that with vector layers too it's a little bit differently with vector layers but we can change their opacity as well okay that's it for this lecture the next lecture we're going to start talking about vector layers points lines and polygons and we'll see you then